My name is Brian Brashaw, and I'm a timber bridge engineer with the University of Minnesota Duluth's Natural Resources Research Institute. In cooperation with HDR Engineering, the USDA Forest Products Laboratory, Minnesota DOT, and a number of counties here in the state, we're conducting a project to be able to uh, incorporate advanced inspection techniques into Minnesota timber bridges. This project, funded by the Local Road Research Board, is allowing us to demonstrate tools such as this and techniques, incorporate them into a short course. We're going to discuss today a technique known as resistance microdrilling. And these are a number of different commercial tools that are available that we utilize all the time. There's three different versions of techniques based on as technology is developed over time. But generally speaking, each of these techniques utilizes a small diameter drill bit. As the drill bit enters a member, it measures the resistance as it drills through. These techniques allow an inspector to be able to understand what the inside dimensions and cross-section of timber members, such as a cap or a timber piling, might have present. All of these work on a drilling technology, so that as this drill bit enters the member, the very leading edge, which is about three millimeter tip or an eighth of an inch, and you can see the shaft is only about two millimeters, so as not to build up friction. As this drill bit enters the member, it measures the density or the hardness of the wood. Sound wood has relatively high resistance. Decayed wood, much less resistance. And internal voids, no resistance. So today we're gonna to go through three different drills as we move forward. The first drill we're gonna look at is manufactured by IML. It's the Resi F300. This is some of the early technology that was developed, but it's still very effective for conducting inspections. This piece of equipment allows the inspector to collect data electronically But visually on the site, it utilizes a piece of chart paper that's inserted into the drill. And as the drill bit enters the wood, this small pin shows the, distant, the resistance as the drilling bit enters the wood itself. Typically, as we've conducted an inspection, we've already done a combination of visual inspection techniques. We may have used a technique like stress wave timing that has allowed us to identify areas of a bridge members that we have concerns about. That may be in the super substructure, that may be the cap, or it may be the piling itself. We're gonna place the drill against the surface of the member that we're going to evaluate. As you can see from the drilling needle, it's picking up individual growth rings as it drills through the member. Sound material has good resistance. As you can see, this one is between 50 and 75 percent of the maximum level. When we do see areas of low quality, the needle will drop nearly to the bottom. When we've reached our maximum drilling depth, we reverse the drill bit and pull it back out of the member itself.
one of the important things to look at after every couple of drills is whether we've damaged or, or reduced the sharpness of the bit itself. All inspectors want to be careful not to drill into any known rocks or metal connections that might be in the member itself. Approximately, these drill bits last usually about 100 drills before they've, uh, their sharpness has been lost and they should be replaced. As we interpret and look at the data, we'll see in this case good resistance and a very uniform spot in the center that isn't necessarily indica indicative of decay, more of the fact that the very center of the piling is also a center of a tree which has low resistance to start with. As we drilled a little bit farther, you can see a substantial drop off here in performance, which indicates that we have about an inch or an inch and a half of decay present in this member. One of the things that's nice and allows us to do is that the inspector can actually take notes and add data right to this chart. The data can be stored electronically in the tool itself, but it oftentimes we, this gives us the ability to take notes and to record that information so that we can scan it into the computer and add it into the electronic files for the future. The second drill we're going to demonstrate is also manufactured by IML. And this is a newer version that uses an electronic drilling control system. As you can see, all of these units are battery powered in one fashion or another. So on the display unit, there's a number of options available. So each inspector can specifically put the bridge number and the drilling number as part of their data collection process. As you can see, there's a number of pieces of information that are also stored electronically with each drill bit. This includes the sample number itself, the drilling rate or speed, whether the needle was sharp in its self-check or auto-check system, and the amount of data that is left to be able to be stored in the internal data acquisition package. As each unit drills in, this is an example of data that's collected and displayed electronically. This data is also stored and can be downloaded to a Bluetooth printer or it can be electronically processed on a laptop. This shows the drilling as it drills through the unit. The peaks are the growth rings themselves within the log or the tree or our piling and any very low area would, would, repli would be an example of an internal void. This is the kind of data that's being collected by this piece of equipment. This unit is now ready to drill into our member. We want to have a good firm connection to the sample itself. We want to drill in as much as possible at a 90 degree angle. It's simply activated by pressing the start button. Once it drills through the member, it returns the needle to its original position and it also checks to make sure that the needle is okay and hasn't broken or been damaged during the drilling process itself. After the completion of the drill, it shows the data that is across the cross section of the member. Areas of decay such as this the data shows very low resistance as it moves process through the system. Each of the spikes and peaks would indicate sound condition. As you can see, the 
chart itself is graphically presented in one half inch segments. So it allows an inspector to determine the, inter the exact internal dimensions of any decay that may be present in the system. This tool can be utilized in a variety of different orientations. It can be used to drill through a member where again you have areas of concern or deterioration. It can be used in a vertical position to come down from the bottom of a member up through the top. It can be used at the water line to drill at an angle to look at any condition that may be present below the water line. It's a very effective tool. It can handle a number, several hundred drills uh, internally that can be stored. And these drill bits, again, often last over 100 drillings. About every 10 drills, the, in, the needle tip condition should be evaluated to make sure that it's still sharp. The third unit that we have available is manufactured by Rintec in Germany. This is again an internal drill driven system that uses the same drilling needle technology to measure the density and wood quality as we move forward. In this case, the data is coupled electronically via Bluetooth connection to a portable printer that an inspector will have on site with them. The data is also collected and maintained internal to the machine itself for download to a laptop computer back in the office. So again, you're going to select your drilling location and position, uh, trying to drill in at a good uniform level. Good contact with the unit itself. There is no graphical display on the unit, but you can look at the printer as you're drilling through. One of the other things that inspectors become familiar with is the sounds as it drills through and voids having a very different sound than other material. Once you're through the member itself or you've drilled as far as you want to, you can reverse the drill and pull it back out of the unit itself. It's a very simple technique and it allows an inspector to inspect the data that's been collected as it drills through the unit itself. The paper copy allows the inspector to take specific notes, which location, which member, other notes that they think that are important to be recorded. This information can then be added electronically as chosen, or these drilling charts can be scanned and entered into SIM software as an image file. As you can see, about two-thirds of the way through this member, we have a very low resistance area, indicating that we have about an inch and a half of internal decay in that piling that we just drilled through. Very straightforward technique, and it allows inspectors to really fully evaluate the internal cross-section. It really takes the guesswork out of what is the full cross-section available during an inspection. Finally, with all these pieces of equipment, oftentimes we're asked, should the holes be filled? These are very small diameter holes. As you can see, we've done a number of drills just in this location. They're very small. There's very little sawdust that actually leaves the hole itself. But in a member that is of good condition, we oftentimes will just squirt a little bit of silicone sealant into that hole to fill the cross section and not allow water to enter from our drilling location. For those members that may be severely deteriorated, this small hole will have no impact at all on the condition or future performance of the member. These tools and resistance drilling technology can be very useful in helping Minnesota's inspectors and engineers understand the structural integrity of our bridge components. It allows them to identify the internal condition of a variety of members, such as abutments and pilings and beams. It allows the engineer to do accurate calculations 
based on a true cross-section of structural sound material. There's a variety of options available from these types of pieces of equipment, from the chart or paper-driven system to a Bluetooth printer or data, electronic data acquisition. Very effective tools, very useful, and allows inspectors to do an excellent job inspecting Minnesota's timber bridges.